Welcome back. I'd like to talk and turn our attention to how we actually produce some of these alloys. And one of the uh, topics that I want to cover is the solidification process. And we're going to be describing equilibrium and non-equilibrium solidification in this lesson. When we look at the phase diagram or a portion of the phase diagram where we're interested in developing specific alloys where we can increase the composition and then go through an aging process. We need to start out with a material and of course the way we do is to begin with going through a solidification process. So if we start up at temperature T0, T0 represents the temperature where all my liquid is a homogeneous liquid. I'm above the liquidus line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cool it down along the direction of the arrow. And for this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cool under equilibrium conditions. That is, as I drop the temperature, I allow the composition to become uniform. And as I progress through the two-phase field, I'm going to see less and less liquid and more and more solid until I come out the bottom um, of the diagram and I have a composition of solid that is the same as the composition of the liquid that I started with. So we start at temperature T0, we get all of the material dissolved in our liquid phase. Then we cool it down to the first point where we hit the liquidus line. As soon as we hit the liquidus line, we get, begin to form um, some solid and the compositions of those two phases are given by the tie line that we talked about in module seven. So we have liquid and we have solid and the diagrams to the right at temperature T1 show a small amount of the alpha phase that's formed and that alpha phase has the composition given by the points on the solidus line. Now as we go down in temperature what we're seeing is an increase in the fraction of solid phase, a decrease in the fraction of the liquid phase. But we're doing this process slow enough so that at each point, the composition of the solid and the composition of the liquid are reaching their equilibrium values. And as we continue to cool down to that lower temperature, where we cross the solidus boundary, what we find is a mixture where we have liquid of the liquidus composition and we have solid of that solidus composition and that material, that little bit of liquid that is left over is the last thing to solidify. And then once we go below this, we have created a solid material and that's our material at temperature TF. So what we've done is what we did exactly in chapter seven in talking about the um, equilibrium cooling and the development of a second phase coming out of a two-phase field. Now this time what we're going to do is we're going to avoid the process of holding it for infinitely long times in order to get the equilibrium state. We're actually going to develop something we refer to as the non-equilibrium uh, process or non-equilibrium solidification. And when we do that, what we're going to find is that because the cooling rate in the liquid is so much faster, over an order of magnitude faster than it would be in the solid, we're going to assume that the liquid, as soon as it begins to transform at that temperature T1, it holds at temperature T1. I begin to form a bit of solid, and that solid is given by the composition along the solidus boundary. So I have a small element of material that has formed, and that element of material has the composition given by the solidus composition. Now I'm going to drop down in temperature, and I'm going to assume that effectively the liquid can homogeneously change its composition much more rapidly 
so that it is almost like mixing up the liquid. So it would be like thinking of the liquid with a stirrer in front of it, and I get an instantaneous change in the liquid composition because as I go down in temperature, I'm enriching both the liquid phase and the solid phase in component B. So as I drop down in temperature and I reach that new temperature point, I'm going to have a new element of material that forms. So when we look at T2, I have that black circle in the center, and around it I have another amount of material that has solidified. That other amount of material that is solidified is the composition that's actually on the solidus line. The line that is to the left, what we often refer to as the average or the non-equilibrium line, that is the average of the first element that solidified and the second element that solidified. And because we're, diffusion is so slow in the solid, we're effectively saying it's zero. And what that ultimately means is that the um, material that is being solidified actually lags behind the actual composition uh, that we would have seen if we cooled under equilibrium conditions. So now we go down to temperature T3, we have another envelope. And that envelope now has the first region that's solidified, the second region that's solidified, and there's been no diffusion because we've shut the fusion off in the solid compared to the liquid. And again, in that next ring, and in that particular case, once again, what we have is the composition of that last thing to solidify has the equilibrium along the solidus boundary, and it has an equilibrium with it, the liquid that lies on the liquidus line. But when you sum up and you average the compositions as this process occurs, what you find is that our average composition of the solid that has been forming because of the variation in composition is less than the composition that you have with respect to the position on the liquidus line. So what's happening then is the liquid continues to enrich, the solid continues to enrich, and as soon as we reach the eutectic temperature, what happens is the liquid composition of the eutectic transforms into the mixture of alpha plus beta. And so what you will have is the maximum composition that is in the equilibrium with that eutectic structure is going to be the value at x max. So we can see that there is in fact a departure from the equilibrium due to the uh, requirement that we placed on the material solidifying. We said that the liquid changes composition and it does it virtually instantaneously. The solid on the other hand does not because the solid diffusivity is uh, effectively equal to zero in comparison to that of the liquid. Now, it turns out that if you look at an aluminum alloy, an aluminum alloy that contains 2% and one that contains 5%, these both have regions of solubility. And in the case of the 2%, what you see in the microstructure in the background of this white phase is actually eutectic material. So even in a dilute alloy, an alloy that contains only 2% copper, you still see the presence of this non-equilibrium eutectic. When you look over at the position right where we see the um, structure that's identified as the cord structure, and that's the grains that have uh, solidified and the composition continuously varies in copper until the last thing it forms is the eutectic, which is um, circled on the diagram. So let's look at that in a little bit more uh, carefully. So we'll look at that micrograph again. There is our eutectic that is in that circle. And now what we have is the chord alpha phase. And schematically, what we have is over here to the left. What we're seeing is an increase in the copper content from the first thing to solidify in the center of this uh, structure. And so as we go from the center of the structure out, 
the composition increases all the way up to a point where we're at the maximum solid solubility as given on the phase diagram. Any liquid that is left over will be the liquid which is of the eutectic composition, and so the last thing that winds up solidifying is the eutectic reaction. So if we put a number of these together in our micrograph, what we'll get is regions of chord alpha and separated by, from other regions of chord alpha by the eutectic region uh, in those channels. Now, it also turns out one of the things that's of, of importance to the solidification process is that if we take an alloy that contains 5% copper and we cool it at two different rates, on the left we have a slow cooling rate, on the right we have a faster cooling rate. And what you can clearly see in both of these photomicrographs, because they're taken at the same uh, level of magnification, what you see is that on the left, the slower solidification rate gives you a larger region of the material where you have the cord material and the spacings between the eutectic reaction ha is, is larger than it is when we look in the right-hand diagram, where in the right-hand diagram, the whole structure is refined. And so we're looking at a refining of the microstructure by increasing the cooling rate. And this has been observed over many years where people have looked at the cooling rates for a variety of casting aluminum alloys. And what you see when you plot on the left hand or in the y-axis, you're plotting the distances between those regions where the eutectic are and the cooling rate. What you find is that it scales with cooling rate the decrease in or the increase in the cooling rate gives you a finer microstructure which is ultimately something that you would like to be able to have. So by affecting changes in the cooling rate you can produce um, materials that are finer in scale, have a finer distribution of um, eutectic microstructure um, that separates um, regions of cord alpha phase. This then gives us a picture of the process of solidification that we normally see in materials that are fabricated under industrial conditions. Thank you.